Get in line. Okay, here we go. Look presentable. If someone's something. Hello, welcome to Mark Makes a Movie. Um, this week has been uh, trying, you know. Uh, just for, I guess this is, before we get into today's subject, what we're gonna talk about is the uh, five stages of independent film. I feel like there's really like four stages to filmmaking if you're working with like larger companies, um, like your big guys, your Disney, your Fox, all that jazz. Um, but if you're watching this, you probably aren't. And you're going to probably write, shoot, and distribute something yourself. So for those, uh, those lone wolves out there, those one of a kind guys, five stages. Uh, we'll go one by one. Um, before we get into it, just a little bit about uh, what's going on in my life this week. Um, recording this a little bit later than usual. Um, I'm gonna have a, we're, I'm not gonna have a baby. Like a baby's not physically coming out of me. However, Junior, a fucking classic. <laughs> no, uh, my wife Lauren is, um, we're having a baby um, probably pretty soon. Like any minute now, if this cuts off and, and I run upstairs, it's because like, you know, some water broke and we have to figure some things out. So um, I've been working a little bit extra at my nine to five job. So, you know, shout out to them for that overtime. That's nice. So we're getting to you guys a little bit later than usual in the week, but hey, I still made it within the seven days. <laughs> okay, so uh, moving on, that was Awful. Oh my God. Don't cut that. It's fine. I'm the editor. I do what I want. I do what I want. Okay. So we have the five stages of film development. So have you ever like seen a movie and thought to yourself, hold on a second, is the audio on? Guys, the audio is on. Great. Have you ever thought to yourself, um, man, that movie sucked. Like, oof, that was bad, but the idea was good. That's because in one of these five stages of film development, um, a good idea went to complete rubbish. So what we're gonna try to do is break down and explain in the simplest terms how um, making a movie is um, a lot like making a sandwich. It is, it is, it's nothing like making a sandwich. That was, that was an awful comparison. I'm usually known for having great, um, you know, similes and metaphors, but that was, I think I'm just nervous. Don't mind me. Okay, so the first step would be film development. Um, this is where your idea comes from. Um, you ever been like smoking a little bit of the devil's lettuce with your friends and whatnot, or, you know, drinking on a little bit of, uh, of, of Lucifer spit there. And you had like, you know what to make a great movie? Um, um, a dog who can talk, who's part of the CIA. Um, and you know, his owner knows who shot JFK. I, I have no idea. That was a horrible pitch. However, maybe through one of these five stages, that pitch can become better. So let's see. Um, so in that, that will be considered what you would consider film development. So film development can take um, months to even years. And basically in that first stage, you're like putting putting the ideas together. You're, you're writing a script, you know, you're going through a couple drafts, you're getting a couple actors in mind. Maybe for the voice of your dog, you're thinking, you know, hey, you know, Will Smith's social media is looking pretty good. You know, he killed it with Aladdin. Maybe this could be a Will Smith vehicle. We'll have Will Smith as a talking corgi like that sounds like money so in that first stage of film of film production you're basically just it's like you know you're getting everything together you're like putting the foundation to what would be your film so that is step number one film development so let's just say like all right you finally found you know you wrote this script or whatever, you've either got the money going on yourself or you know, you're know you moving in with a studio or a partner or someone like that. And even get to stage two, which is pre-production. So pre-production is where you would, you have your idea, you basically have your script, you kind of know what kind of movie you're going to make. This is when you would go and like get all the tools to make your movie. And by tools, I would mean your director, your producer, um, anyone of that caliber, anyone who's going to be key within making the film. 
So at this point in pre-production is when you would go up to Will Smith and be like, hey, Will Smith, I have a great idea about um, about you voicing this, this, this doll who can talk and he's part of the CIA. Um, at this stage too, this is when you would possibly, you know, try to attack larger people to help you pay for the film. This is when financing comes into play. So who's gonna pay for it? How are you gonna pay for it? Um, you would be looking at directors around this time. Um, and yeah, and taking it from there. So going back to how a, like a movie can become um, a good move, a bad idea can become a good idea or a good idea can become a bad idea. Let's just say in the film production stage, the pre-production stage, you're shopping your script around and um, Studio Spaces picks up your script and they're just like, hey, this this film about a dog who wants to be part of the CIA sounds great. However, um, we're not really feeling this aspect of it. Let's send it off for a punch up. Let's send it off to another writer. Your film comes back and it's still blueprint and they still have your idea of a talking dog. However, your film has changed drastically. Now your film is no longer about a talking dog who joins the CIA. Your film is now about a very smart dog who goes into witness protection um, because he witnessed the people who um, originally assassinated his original owners. And by witness protection, he ran away and ran into the arms of a sweet loving boy. And they look at Tom Holland's schedule and he's not available. And they look at Will Smith's schedule and now Will Smith has to pull out because you took too much time trying to negotiate with Tom Holland. So now you lost Will Smith as the voice of your talking corgi. So what are you going to do now? Who's going to pick up the pieces um, to your talking corgi? I don't know. These are like the weird things that can happen in the different stages of film development. But let's just, you know, grab a name out of the hat since you lost Will Smith. Um, now you lost Tom Holland. Let's go grab one of the um, Stranger Thing kids. So what we'll end up having is we'll have uh, Finn Wolfhard. <laughs> He's having a great year. Be the actual voice. I mean, we'll be the kid. We'll be the, the kid who takes in the dog. And uh, we picked up Aquafina to actually voice the dog because she's coming off of that Golden Globes win. She has availability, and we're moving forward. So that's when we would get into the third stage of our film production. Uh, I had notes. I lost said notes. This is why. You know, taking notes on your iPhone um, is an awful idea in business meetings. Never, never write down notes on your iPhone. You know what works? You know, cue cards work. You know, those little, like, little, like the little flash cards you used to write multiplication tables and shit on. Get some flash cards in your life. Don't use your phone. Your phone's gonna betray you. All right, here we go. So after we went through phase one, which is uh, film production, and we go through phase two, which is pre-production, now we're gonna get into the meat and potatoes of making your film. We're gonna go to phase three, which is film production or uh, production. You know, there's no pre to it. It's just straight up production. This is when the balls are rolling. You know, the money is being spent. The locations have been booked. The wardrobes have been supplied. They went out and they found a great corgi to play your talking corgi who's, you know, from the CIA or whatever. Um, and so this is where like, when films get made, this is like principal photography. This is that stage of filmmaking, super daunting. Uh, it can range anywhere from a day to uh, you know, like two years. Um, it's it's kind of a whoever's man's game at how long film's gonna take. It usually depends on like, the. it usually depends on the film itself. You know, animations can take a lot longer than live actions. Um, independent films can move a lot faster and a lot shorter than big budget tent poles from studios. So after you get through film production, you would move into the fourth stage of filmmaking, which would be post-production. And this is when the cameras have finally wrapped. The actors are pretty much done for the most part. They're not off the hook yet though. There's still more. Um, this is when post-production kicks in and it basically goes to the editing studio. And post-production is where you would handle things like your audio mixing, um, your actual editing, your color correction, um, and you know, you can add in um, your visual effects. At this stage of the film, 
they're testing it in post-production. It's looking, you know, they got a couple cuts of it and um, they're showing it to some people and they're realizing like, hey, this isn't working. This film about a talking corgi who's uh, witnessed, you know, his parent, who, who witnesses the original owners being assassinated and then runs into the arms of, you know, Stranger Things kid. Um, it's not really like connecting to the audience like we did. Maybe Aquafina isn't the right person to voice this. Should we bring in someone else to voice it? So maybe one of the guys says, hey, we can actually cut budget and have no talking at all. So it'd be more like a Lassie situation where the dog doesn't talk, but the dog's really smart. Think classic Disney. So it's just like, well, okay, your original idea was about a talking dog who wanted to join the CIA. Now your film that's gonna be released to the audience is a non-talking dog who basically ran away from a bunch of murderers and is in like its own version of witness protection with, you know, one of the Stranger Thing kids. It's a different movie. I don't know, it might work, it might not work. Who's to say? Basically, post-production can last indefinitely in some cases. Um, a, a fine example, there's a film called The New Mutants. You can check out a link somewhere. Um, maybe there's one in the description below. There probably isn't. I don't know if I'm gonna link it or not. But originally the script, the original trailer came out two years ago and it did not, it was not testing well. So Fox, before they got brought by Disney, went back into the vault and decided to try some new things out and shoot some more footage and basically made a whole different movie with the same characters in the same title. And they just released a new trailer rather recently. And I gotta say, shit looks good. The shit looks good. It looks pretty good. Not gonna lie. Not good, better. But hey, who's who's to say? So in most traditional circumstances, this is when the filmmaking process would stop. You know, you go through your um, your concept and development phase your pre-production phase, your production phase, and then your post-production phase. When post-production wraps, your movie is released. You're done. Pat yourself on the back. You made a uh, you made a movie. Um, for indie guys such as myself, and you know, for anyone else who's watching this, there comes the fifth stage of making a movie, which is distribution. And this guy is a pain in the ball sack. If you um, have access to a lot of different um, channels and networks and you have people at like Netflix or you know um, of like distribution companies who can get you on SVODs and TVODs, um, that's great. If you have relationships with local theaters and you can get screenings of your films, um, that's awesome. Um, when it comes to this stage for independent filmmakers, this is where a lot of people either make it or break it. And it's it's a very, it's a stage that not a lot of people talk about. Um, that's because a lot of people, when they get there, they either make it or they, they like disappear into the night. I, I follow um, the independent, um, well, the indie film hustle. And he has a lot of great information on you know, how to distribute your film and market your film. But one of the things you're gonna to wanna to think about, and if you're, um, if you are self distributing your film, is hopefully when you were in the beginning phases of, um, of making your film, way back before production and pre production, when you were still in the concept and development phase, you thought about your audience. Um, that is super important. Who are you gonna sell this movie to? If we take our Corgi film and your original audience was CIA buffs, well, they're no longer part of your audience because we cut out the CIA. Um, you would probably have a better chance at marketing it to people who enjoyed Stranger Things because you have Stranger Things kid in there. And, um, you know, it's, it's more in line with like old school Disney. Uh, think of blank check or anything along those lines. So your demographic just skewed a little. So you will definitely want to think about who your audience is and how you're going to reach out to them. Um, the different ways to reach out to people from independent distribution, a lot of people just think originally like YouTube, like, you know, we're on this platform right now. And if you're seeing this, you're probably seeing this on YouTube or like an Instagram or a Facebook. And that is a horrible, 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 horrible idea. Um, 
for your feature film. It's a great place for short films, um, web series or streaming series of that caliber. But for your feature film, if you're putting a lot of work and effort into it, you just don't want to release it up onto a YouTube. The way that most people generally go about releasing their independent feature films is um, they usually do the film, um, they usually hit the film festival circuit of some sort. So, you know, they'll try to go for the big guys. If not, they'll try to go for the niche guys. Um, if your Corgi film was about a Corgi that was possessed by a demon and it's now haunting and killing people inside of a household, you know, maybe uh, Sundance isn't best for you, but you know, like Fear Fest might be a good spot for you to swing through and drop your, and, and drop your film there. After you would shop your film around a couple of these different like film festivals, um, you would want to do, if possible, a couple of what is called like a four wall screening, which is basically screening your film um, locally if you can. Um, that's super expensive, but if you can do it, it definitely will like boost the visibility of your film, which is like. Um, then after that, you probably would want to reach out to uh, the different streaming sites. So here's the thing that not a lot of people know. There's only one place that lets you, like, like, like you, you right there, actually physically like upload your video to their, um, like their on-demand platform, and that's Amazon Prime. As of today, which is January 12th, uh, 2020, um, in the year of our Lord, they will let you actually upload your film to Amazon Prime without any real um, in between. Um, Apple, Netflix, any of those other guys, um, it's not like that. Hulu, it's generally not like that. You usually have to go through some type of streaming aggregator and those relationships are interesting. Um, there's different markets to cut up. There's international markets, there's local markets. Um, but then there's like DVDs. No one really buys DVDs anymore, but you can still sell like on demand downloads and rentals. So things like that. So if you're um, looking into making your own feature film, make sure that you go through these steps equally. Think about each one because they all affect one another, especially when you're working on such a smaller level. Um, do not forget stage five. Distribution is a huge, huge, huge part of your film and how you design that model should be built when you're in the pre-production stages. When you're creating your film for your audience, you should know how your audience is best gonna to wanna to receive that film. If you don't, you're probably gonna end up maxing out your credit cards, living back home with mom and dad, and probably hating filmmaking for you know a while. And we don't want that. You deserve better. We deserve better. We all deserve better. So yeah. <laughs> God. That is the five stages of making a film. I hope you learned something and enjoyed something. Um, I'm actually in that beginning phases now with this film, well, this project, what we have here, Mark makes a film. Mark makes a film, come on, bro. Mark makes a movie, stay on brand, my guy. So I have been thinking long and hard about the film that I would like to make here. And I don't know yet, but, we gotta speed it along, January's almost through. And if I'm trying to get this ball rolling, um, I gotta move fast. So let's figure it out. Like, what what do you think would be more interesting to go for the next video? Would you rather um, to figure out um, how to write a script or how to find a niche? I don't know, we'll find out some. And as I discover these things, I'll be updating y'all as well. Right now, I. I am stuck between two ideas on what film that I am going to make. I mean, the Corgi film doesn't sound like a bad film. Would you guys actually see a film about a Corgi who, you know, witnesses its owner's, you know, murder and then runs off and meets up with a Stranger Things kid and then the two of them actually solve the case together? You know, that could be kind of cool. Call it the, you know, the rescue pup or something. Boom. Just made a franchise. Pay me. Um, but so I'm for micro budget films is what I'm going to be um, basically shooting under. We don't have a lot of money. So I'm either going to go with a, a mumblecore film, which is basically oh, that'd be great. Actually, maybe the next video we'll talk about film genres, break them down. I think that'd be a great one. I'm probably leaning toward mumblecore myself for my own project. 
And um, Mumblecore, I can give you a synopsis of it now, is basically people talking. A slice of life, um, you know, it is, it is how you make a budget film. You know, you just gotta, you know, insert your own creativity in there and have some solid performances. Stop hiring your buddies who don't take acting classes and who just feel like they can act because they seen their ball player friend act or something. It's not, it's not the same, it's not the same. All right, well that does it for us for this week. Oh, snap, hey, by the way, um, I just released um, our new, well me and my creative partner, Derek K. Darko, uh, we did the podcast, The Mark and Dark Show, um, for a long time. We just dropped the first episode in our web series, The Life of Kofi. So there's a link somewhere, probably down below, maybe a card or something poking around up in here. I don't know. I don't know how to do this thing yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. I just learned how to tag videos the other day properly. You know, shout out to YouTube for helping other YouTubers. You know, YouTube. Yep. So check out that video. Um, there's gonna be five episodes in the season. Um, we had a lot of guest directors that were awesome. We had a lot of awesome cast. Um, I worked as the DP on that one. Not super happy about that, but when life gives you lemons, you make limoncello, baby. Limoncello. Look it up. It's delicious. It's fantastic. It's like a whiny dessert. Whatever. But um, yeah, overall, I think it looks great. You know. Um, I don't really consider myself a DP. I'm more of a director. We'll go over those titles a little bit later, but um, we, we, we made it work and we did it with nothing. And I think it looks amazing and um, I'm really proud of it. So give it a give it a view. Again, the link is somewhere probably below, definitely below, but maybe off to the side too. We'll see. And um, to back in next week with more of the journey, uh, Mark makes a movie. All right, we out. <laughs>